I'm about to talk about some global things right now. I'm going from Japan, I'm going to China, and I'm going to South Korea. And we're talking about empty schools, declining birth rates, real estate, and the impact on the medical field. And I'm using these countries as examples. I'm doing this because even if we have slightly different issues going on globally, the the issues that are keeping women from having babies or making conditions where women do not want to have babies will have implications on many different sectors of life. Schools will go empty, real estate will suffer, infrastructure will crumble, medical, the medical communities will continue to shift around to more profitable areas or to areas of more need because of women choosing to not have babies. And we are simply, we're in a place right now here in America that is experiencing this. So you are about to see a melange of things that I put together. Stick with me. There is a point. I am making a point because we need to see this. Um, we need to see what could happen. These ghost towns could happen. The aging population in some states could look like what some of these Japanese um, towns are looking like. And some communities are probably already looking like this. So I know that this might sound seem like a bunch of random pieces, but it does all fit together. The global community will shed some light on what could happen, but people don't see the bigger picture and how things go together like this. So you guys watch all of these. I think I have um, three different videos that I put together and then comment on the back end. For months, I have been talking about the global birth rate decline and you will start to see the impacts. And even here in America, we will start to see the impacts of the global decline. Now, I'm going to talk about some real things that are going on um, globally. The aging population in Japan leaves schools with empty classrooms. Now, empty classrooms are a big teller of what will happen. About 450 schools close every year, government data shows. Between 2002 and 2020, nearly 9,000 shut their doors forever, making it hard for remote areas to lure in new and younger residents. This top comment, I'm worried that people won't consider this area as a place to relocate to start a family if there's no junior high school. Think about all that goes into um, having schools there the shopping, the need for certain um, activities, the the support as far as care and where are the, um, who's going to grow up to continue to support the, the elderly as they get older. If there's no new blood coming in and that is evident by the schools closing, who will support these people? That's just another foresight, I mean, more foresight that people are not having as they are creating legislation that might um, be harmful or might not support what women need in order to have kids. China is going through the same thing. China's population, kindergartens fall for the first time in 15 years as demographic crisis takes a toll. The number of kindergartens last year fell by 5,600. Um, according to the Ministry of Education, the number of students enrolled in kindergarten and preschools also dropped, dropped a trend that coincides with China's plunging birth rate. The report also showed the number of students enrolled in kindergartens and preschools dropped by 3.7% from the year earlier. So the closing of schools, and this is happening here in America as well, um, communities are dying and you can see that when there is no um, children, when there is no crying, when people are choosing not to have babies. And this is just for the people here in America. If you do not see people wanting to have children, and we know why, our governments in Asia and the United States might not be the same, but the global birth rate drop will continue to have similar um, repercussions and it's going to impact schools, it's going to impact real estate, it's going to impact the services that go along that need to have bodies to support the elderly. All of this goes hand in hand and people need to pay attention to it. Jump in the comments. Like, comment, share. This commenter's 
comment reminded me about the article that I had seen about South Korean doctors leaving South Korea or leaving the, the practice because of the low birth rate. South Korea is suffering from a shortage of pediatricians, partly a result of the world's lowest birth rate and increasingly a factor behind it, leaving hospitals unable to fill posts and raising risk for children's health. The number of pediat um, pediatric clinics and hospitals in the capital has fallen by 12.5% over the five years to 2022 to just 456. Over the same period, the number of psychiatry clinics has increased by 76.8%, while anesthesiology centers saw a 41.2% rise, according to the Seoul Institute. At the root of the problem is the birth rate that failed to 0.78 in 2022. That's the average number of babies expected per woman combined with the failure of the insurance system to adapt to it. Leaving pediatrics starved of resources, doctors shunning a field they think has no future. According to ministry data, hospitals were only able to secure the services of 16.3% of the pedi pediatricians they sought in the first half of this year, down from 97.4% 10 years ago. For parents, the shortage means long waits for treatments for sick children. One recent morning, the waiting room at the hospital in Seoul's outskirts was packed with dozens of children, many on intravenous drips. We had to wait two weeks. Um, said Lee Bomi, a 35-year-old mother with a sick three-year-old. At this rate, even mild diseases are going to be devastating. People need to understand what low birth rates mean. Low birth rates will be catastrophic for um, many different industries. And without some foresight here in this country, we will be seeing the same thing because we see the same thing with um, with gynecologists running away from red states. We see the same thing. It might be for different reasons right now, but it will impact people overall. So you guys go ahead. Let me know what you think about this one. Story with a knock-knock joke, but I won't, as it will probably be met with silence. Because this story is about Japan, the East Asian nation is turning into a ghost town. You already know that its population is shrinking. It fell by half a million last year. Deaths are rising while birth rates are sinking. And this has bred a new problem. The island nation is now home to millions of vacant houses. They sit empty and unlit in suburbs and rural areas alike, surrounded by overgrown, unkempt gardens. And there's about 11 million of them. The situation is so bad that the government has stepped in. But now these antique homes have a niche clientele. They have found their place in the luxury market. Here's a report. Who wouldn't like to live in an antique Japanese home? Especially if it's being sold for a few thousand dollars. But here's the catch. It may have a terrible rot. Its roof could collapse at any moment and it's probably under attack by unruly weeds. We're talking about the island nation's abandoned empty houses. And the Japanese have a name for them. They're known as Akia, and now they've become the country's newest problem. Because a housing crisis is haunting Japan, turning it into a ghost town much faster. They already have a demographic crisis. Their population fell for the 12th consecutive year. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said if this continues, Japan will disappear. It has one of the lowest birth rates in the world, but also one of the highest life expectancies. And last year, twice as many people died as were born. So now, millions of houses are vacant. Japan has a glut of unclaimed properties. The most recent government data is from five years ago, it reported 8 million vacant homes across the country. That's about 14% of their overall housing stock. But experts say this number has drastically increased. Now it stands at 11 million. And in the next decade, over 30% of all houses in Japan could be empty. The population crisis definitely plays a role here. But there are other reasons for this too. There is a valuation problem. Houses in Japan decrease in value over time. Eventually, they're worthless. Only the land retains value. So owners don't want to maintain an aging house. 
there is little incentive. There is an inheritance problem too. Homes are being abandoned by the heirs of previous owners. And some homeowners die without ever naming an inheritor. Others leave the properties to relatives who refuse to sell simply out of respect for the elders. And while the Akiya continue to wither away, they don't suffer in silence. They are potentially hazardous and prone to collapsing. Not to mention, they also mar the scenery. But experts say they're also threatening the emotional health of Japan, as they've sparked numerous family disputes. But now authorities are stepping up. Consultants are helping squabbling families, and the government is also giving these homes a push. They're subsidizing demolitions, collecting neighborhood reports on maintenance, holding awareness programs, and allowing local authorities to raise property taxes on IKEA.